A warm greeting? Today is Wednesday, October 2, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In this video, I would like to talk about the cyclonic activity we are seeing in the tropical Atlantic region, where we currently have Hurricane Kirk, which is expected to become a major hurricane as it moves north in the Atlantic. As we can see in this satellite animation, its circulation is extremely impressive. We also have Invest 91, which is expected to become Tropical Storm and Hurricane Leslie in the coming days, as it also takes a path toward the north of the Atlantic. I will also be discussing a third tropical wave that will emerge from Africa by the end of this week, which could also encounter favorable conditions for cyclonic development. At the end of the video, I will talk about a forecast that was published yesterday regarding the cyclonic activity we can expect in October and November, particularly in the Caribbean region. This article was published by the University of Colorado, where they indicate that after the cyclonic activity we are seeing in the tropical Atlantic, it is likely that during October and November, we will see the formation of a significant cyclone in the Caribbean Sea. Let's first zoom in on the tropical Atlantic region. Here we have Hurricane Kirk which continues to organize and strengthen as it moves north, and you can clearly see how broad its circulation is. This will likely be the largest cyclone of this hurricane season in the Atlantic in terms of circulation size. We also have Invest 91, which continues to be affected by strong wind shear related to the outflow of Hurricane Kirk, which has delayed the development of Tropical Depression 13 and Tropical Storm Leslie. However, Invest 91 has excellent upper-level ventilation to the northeast, which should allow it to become the next cyclone of this hurricane season. At least Hurricane Kirk is forecasted to maintain its northwestward track over the next three days, eventually turning north-northeast, so it poses no threat to the Caribbean or Bermuda. Thus, this impressive hurricane will remain over the open waters of the Atlantic, accumulating a lot of accumulated cyclone energy, which could lead this hurricane season to be considered above normal for October. In this infrared satellite image projection, you can see the forecast for next Friday and Saturday, where we can see how impressive Hurricane Kirk will become, likely reaching Category 3 or Category 4 status as it moves northward in the Atlantic. Also, notice that the GFS model projects that Invest 91 could become a tropical storm and hurricane over the weekend and early next week, also showing a fairly impressive circulation. This cyclone will also contribute significantly to the accumulated cyclone energy. So now we think that, in the end, this hurricane season will indeed be more active than usual. The current cyclonic activity in the tropical Atlantic is especially remarkable in October, a month when cyclonic activity typically decreases dramatically in the region. Invest 91 remains with a 90% chance of cyclonic development, so in the next 24 to 36 hours, we are likely to see tropical depression 12. Other models, like the European model, also project a northward trajectory for both disturbances, meaning there is no reason to worry in the Caribbean about either Hurricane Kirk or the future Hurricane Leslie. Furthermore, all members of the GFS model ensemble agree on maintaining a northward trajectory for Hurricane Kirk, and there is a consensus that the future Hurricane Leslie will also follow a northward path, staying far away from the Lesser Antilles. Next week, we may also see another tropical wave emerging from Africa, which we will be monitoring closely. The European model ensemble also projects a similar trajectory for Hurricane Kirk as that indicated by the National Hurricane Center, so there is strong consensus about its path. Regarding Invest 91, there is less agreement among the European model members. Some show a more rightward trajectory, while others show a more westward path. However, regardless of the outcome, the important thing is that all scenarios point to a northeastward trajectory away from the Caribbean. Also, next week, we will be monitoring the potential development of another tropical cyclone south of Cape Verde. In the next 10 days, it is likely that the tropical Atlantic will see the formation of three cyclones, which is quite impressive, especially considering that October usually sees a sharp decline in cyclonic activity in this part of the Atlantic. The peak of the season, which typically occurs in mid to late September, has shifted to early and mid-October, largely due to the favorable phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation, MJO, currently over the Atlantic. This favorable phase is expected to remain over the Atlantic for at least the first 10 days of October, after which a less favorable phase will arrive by mid to late October. It is likely that cyclonic activity in the tropical Atlantic will significantly decrease by mid-October, and we will then focus on the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico, where we have seen the formation of dangerous hurricanes late in the season. In fact, yesterday the University of Colorado mentioned that they ran a statistical model forecast for October and November, which indicated that the Caribbean could generate 34 accumulated cyclone energy units during those months. The concerning part of this result is that it resembles the AC seen in highly active years like 1998, 2005, 2016, and 2020, when dangerous hurricanes formed in the Caribbean during October and November. For example, in 1998, we saw the formation of a Category 5 hurricane, Hurricane Mitch, which became one of the deadliest hurricanes in Atlantic history. In 2005, 
we saw the formation of several cyclones, including the powerful Hurricane Wilma, which intensified into a Category 5 hurricane in the Western Caribbean, and recorded one of the lowest barometric pressures on Earth. More recently, in 2020, we saw the formation of several hurricanes, including the powerful hurricanes Iota, Eta, and Delta. Although this model result is quite aggressive, the University of Colorado commented that a less favorable phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation is expected to settle over the Atlantic during October and November. As a result, they believe that the forecast of 34 accumulated cyclone energy units between October and November in the Caribbean may not come to pass, which is why they have reduced the prediction to 15 AC units for the Caribbean during those months. However, this is still higher than usual. This means that after mid-October, we are likely to see a significant reduction in cyclonic activity in the tropical Atlantic, and we will start closely monitoring the Caribbean, where sea surface temperatures are extremely warm for this time of year. For now, it is important to note that the Caribbean region is calm, as the cyclonic activity over the next few weeks will likely remain over the open waters of the Atlantic. No new cyclones are expected to develop in the Caribbean at this time, while we continue to monitor the Gulf of Mexico for potential cyclonic development in the coming days. Well, that's all for now. In the afternoon, I will record another video to discuss the activity that could occur in the Gulf of Mexico and the Eastern Pacific waters, so make sure to check if you're subscribed to my channel so you don't miss any content. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell to receive updates when I upload new videos. Well, that's it for now. I hope you all have an excellent day. Goodbye.